Hi guys, I'm Silvio and I am completely in the dark. I know it is a very strange way to start a new mini-series, but believe me, it is absolutely intentional. Let me switch on something like that. I've placed one, two, three, four standard Lemax slash Limax colonial street lamps on top of this new bridge. <laughs> Maybe you haven't figured out that this is a bridge and that's <laughs> the problem, guys. Let me try to explain. Those are standard colonial street lamps. You buy them, you use them in all your Christmas villages. But those four lamps are too fade, guys. And 99% of the time, it is mandatory to add some spotlights into your villages because those street lamps are good looking, obviously, but absolutely useless in projecting some light on your Christmas villages, especially if you want to uh, let your siblings, let your family see your village in the dark and with simply some street lamps like those one, it is impossible. Why I'm telling you all this? Because this mini-series will be focused on street lamps, yes, but mainly on how to integrate yourself LEDs into your Christmas villages, using them to produce, to build some new type of street lamps, but also integrate them wherever you want, maybe in, in some uh, defective uh, light system inside your Christmas buildings, or if you wanted to hide them somewhere. Avoiding the use of those spotlights I was talking about that are absolutely, absolutely ideas for me to be placed inside a Christmas village because it is not natural. Having a street lamp, yes. Having a spotlight in plain middle of a square, no. I will try to show you that it is not that difficult to use LEDs, to use a minimum of electronics and get a fantastic result that will <laughs> push you to completely forget Lamax or Limax street lamps. It's a pity, but during the years they didn't uh, understood, they didn't understood that their street lamps are too fade, useless. Let me be more precise. Let me add another type of light. Sorry, I'm still in the dark, I know, but it is intentional. Because it is very, 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 very intentional. I'm placing another type of street lamp. Maybe you will recognize it because I used it in my 2023 Christmas village. I will place it like that and I will do that. Look at the difference, guys. This is a flickering LED. <clears throat> I didn't both that street lamp. I made it by myself. It's not difficult, it's very easy. Simply a question of applying the good method to what you are doing and electronics don't need to scare you because this is 101 electronics absolutely not complicated if you can do some 1 plus plus 1 2 by 2 uh, 4 divided by 2 then you will find this very easy sorry this is not the perfect uh, analogy but believe me it's simple as uh, standard basic uh, arithmetics this is a flickering LED. Look, the range, the range, 
Let me switch off once again this one. Just need to uh, leave the uh, to let the AC adapter lose capacity. Okay, the range for these street lamps is two centimeters, four centimeters, but you can't appreciate whatever it is around. <laughs> Just here, just here. This is already in plain shadow, there also. But if I switch on this one, you have the range from here to there. So almost one simple street lamp, and this is a flickering, so ancient way of doing a street lamp, it allow <laughs> the bridge to be complete, almost completely illuminated by just one street lamp. But this is using some very warm, very uh, yellow light, so not very cold light. Let me use another street lamp, another street lamp that I made during the years, and this one it is completely cold light, okay, very white, pure bright light. And this one is taller than this one, so it projects a cone of light, uh, um, a wider cone of light on top of the bridge. But those are real street lamps, real street lamps. And maybe now you can appreciate that this is a bridge. This will be one of the new items, props for my 2024 Christmas Village. And I've already shown you a preview of it, but now you are seeing it there, not painted uh, with many other things missing. But this will be a bridge. This will be one of the main actors of the new Christmas Village. So what I did, I used some pure white LEDs inside there and a flickering light, uh, yellow uh, LED inside there. You can understand that this is a yellow LED, this is a more white but to yellow uh, flickering LED, this is a pure white. There are plenty of colors and this mini series will be focused on that. Can you easily integrate LEDs inside whatever you want uh, with, with something you modified by yourself, with something you 3D print? Yes, very easily. And this mini series will be divided in parts no more than 30 minutes long. So enough for this intro, it is too long. Uh, let me do a little of theory. You need a little of theory b b before getting into real work. So in the next minutes, getting from now to 30 minutes, it will be some uh, theory. Not tedious theory, but it is important to let you know something. Hello again, guys. So is it that difficult to get rid of those very fade, very useless standard street lamps? and get and build and make by yourself a new type of street lamp, more efficient street lamp using LEDs? No, it's quite the opposite, very simple. You just need to apply some simple rules and some simple method of work. And to get from point A to point B, it will be like snapping your finger. Maybe you can get to point B, like I did, starting from this point A, that is nothing else than a useless, very short, pure plastic dollhouse street lamp with no wires, with no um, LED inside, and with some wires and some LED inside, you get a functional, very efficient, uh, street lamp, or maybe you can start from nothing at all. Model yourself two half of a street lamp with inside some grooves to get the wires inside, 
and obtain, once completed, this street lamp here with some wires inside there in the grooves and an LED bulb inside this lantern here. And I will show you that it is very, very easy using some LEDs, different type of LEDs, and they are simple, uh, some cylinder, five millimeters cylindric uh, LEDs. I will get to that in part two. This part one will be focused, as I already told you, in some theory, and because without the theory, you can't understand everything you need to get from point A, from point A to point B without fear. This is simple 101 electronics, uh, simple as snapping your fingers, uh, simple as making two plus two, very easy. I know someone may be scared by electronics, but don't be pleased. So you need to start from a point. I will start from this point. Is it dangerous to make those street lamps? Simply because uh, you are used to get afraid of electricity. That's why I have here some not wall socket, but some multiple socket here, uh, simulating your wall socket at home. A little of theory very quickly done okay so a paper etc your uh, wall socket in europe works at 220 volts in us and some other countries at 110 volts and this has always been a problem because it has always been dangerous for you, for your children, etc. But why? And I will get there. To let you understand that working with LEDs and voltages is not that dangerous there. Here, in your wallet, in your, in, in your uh, wall socket, sorry, you have two two 220 volts or 110 volts. And this is alternate current, okay? This is alternate current. It is not a, a continuous co current, okay? So it is a wave. I'm not here for a physics lesson because this is very dangerous, okay? Inside there you have 220 volts. And, but uh, you never heard of positive and negative. Simply because you just need to plug into those uh, socket there, a plug this way, remember that I place it there, you simply need to place a bulb inside and then switch it on and it is uh, on. But if I invert this plug and I turn it like that, 180 degrees, and plug it there, it's simply working, even if you have only two wires there, okay? So there is no mention of a positive and negative there. Remember that, no positive and negative, but dangerous. Why dangerous? We need to talk about voltage and voltage and current, so intensity. So volts and intensity, so amps, amperes, okay, amperes. I'm going quickly because I want this to be 30 minutes. Let me do something. I will go there with three there, two there, one hole, two there, three there, maybe a little higher. And in this case, I will go uh, three there, uh, like that, I will go just one here, then I will go two there, or maybe I will go three there, and then I will go once again, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, two, two, four, two, five, once again here, okay? And then I will go one tube here,
like that and here I will go this way in the same room you fill this with some water at the same level then you place a little uh, barrage there okay but uh, if you open this pipe here and if you open this pipe here you get water through there in uh, more water here that this will empty more quickly than this one obviously because you have a wider pipe here and a narrower pipe here imagine that the water here is the voltage and then the water that gets through here is the current is the intensity it is the amps here you got the volts here you got the amps that's why you call it current like a flow of water more intensity is the flow more intensity is the current more dangerous it is a river okay so here you got less current because the pipe is narrower here you got a larger narrower so the current is um, more intense and the reservoir the the container empty more quickly in this way than in this way and this little section here will be the resistance will be the resistance okay voltage equal resistance per intensity voltage resistance or resistor and intensity and current this is ohm low but with this example using some water you can understand uh, using the analogy of the water that this flow is more dangerous than this flow even if the voltage the quantity of water it is the same normally in your socket you go to 220 volts or 110 volts both sides and the ampere here it is in Europe between and other countries that use 220 volt between 10 and 16 amps who use at 110 volts it is between 20 uh, between 15 and 20 amps so voltage and current and intensity and dangerosity it is very dangerous it's not just the voltage it's also the amps 10 amps who is a current absurd so it's not just okay you get electrocuted by voltage no it is also the amperage that electrocute you and that this make dangerous okay so this is basic 101 low ohm i hope that this will get you understanding why using this is very dangerous and why using leds is not dangerous leds and all uh, your Christmas villages works between 3 volts and 4.5 volts a fraction of these and the amps are between 0 0.3 amp and 2 or 3 amps slash 3 amps so very ridiculous very not dangerous you can't get electrocuted by 3 volts or 4 volts especially at 0 0.3 amps or 2 or 3 amps okay why because you use those AC adapter those are in fact 
the AC adapter, they are AC DC adapter. They transform alternate current coming out from your uh, wall socket into continuous current. And they transform 220 volts or 120 volts to multiple lower voltage. Those AC adapter works from 3 volts up to uh, 12 uh, volts. That is the standard for LED strips, for example. So they diminish the dangerosity. And if here you have around 10 to 20 amps, here they start from 0.6 amps and this particular is 2.25 amps because they are used to, uh, to power multiple LEDs or multiple sources but you can also get those with just 0.6 if you place two fingers inside here you will die if you place like that, you switch it on and you place a finger on the positive and a finger on the negative like I do, you get a little shock, but you will surely not die. Okay? Impossible to die from getting electrocuted by those lower voltage and those lower amperage, amps. Okay? So enough for the dangerosity. That's enough for being. I hope this is absolutely clear that this will not be dangerous at all for you. I'm going quickly, I know, but between part one and part two, if you comment that I, I needed to specify some more things to you, please do it and I will get back with some theory. I am not, uh, I'm not, I, I decided not to go too deep into theory because it will be tedious, but at least this is not dangerous. Let's talk, if I have some more minutes, let's talk about another thing. Uh, let's talk about um, the unit of measure. You are certainly used to those kind of packaging. Let me approach this is a, a light bulb and you get vats of course but you also get lumen i don't know if i can get you there lumen mm, one uh, 1350 lumen that this is the intensity the how much light the bulb will produce and also some kelvin there this is six 1500 Kelvin. What those means? It means that this one you have just seen it is if I'm getting there correctly uh, it is 4000 Kelvin. 4000 Kelvin. Let me replace that bulb with these six 1500 kelvins and you get that this one is more cold white cold light so mm, mm, higher the kelvins the colder the light it will be it will be cold light approaching 3000 kelvin or 2000 kelvin it is a very uh, warm, very uh, yellowish light between 6050 Kelvin and 70,000 70, 7, 7, Kelvin it is cool, pure cool white and those are obviously LEDs bulb as um, has to be green, new bulbs are green okay, so Kelvin they are used or lumen in this case lumen the how much light it will produce and Kelvin if it is white warm white or cold white 
for LEDs, you get different measures. You get, and let me write it uh, caps, micro candela. I'm sorry, but the unit is in Italian this time. I'm not joking. They are called micro candela or MCD. The micro candela, the MCD, is the equivalent of lumen. Okay? It is the equivalent of the lumen. The higher the MCD is, mo the more light you get from an LED. This is a pure white, so those LEDs there are our MCD are uh, very bright, so they are between 20,000 MCD. I use LCD, uh, LEDs that are between 20,000 or 15,000 and 20,000 up to there, because I want a big uh, cone of line projected into my, um, my, mm, my Christmas village. Then you can get white, you can get blue and green LEDs and those works at around 3 volts. If you use yellow or orange they work at 2 volts. If you use some red they work between 1.8 and 2 volts. That means that if you want to use those AC adapter that don't get below 3 volts, you will not be able to use in your street, in your Christmas village, yellow, orange or red, unless you use some resistor. I'm not talking about a resistor right now, because it's not, but if you want some integration, about resistors and how to get how to get to work with some yellow, orange or red LEDs with those AC adapter. We, you will need AC adapter. You can't uh, plug <laughs> some uh, some plug like this into the socket and get uh, the LEDs working. You need an AC adapter. Okay. I will focus on white, blue, green, and more precisely on white. So three volts. Those Lamax LEDs work on 4.5 volts because you have a multiple of them and you have a resistor inside here. But if you use 3 volts AC adapter, correct, connected as I do generally, connected to some parallel LEDs, you will get no problem, everything working with no problem at all. So 3 volts. 2 volts and we will be focusing on the 3 uh, volts. Okay, what is a LED? A light emitting diode and in electronics you also get a diode. Okay, let's talk about a diode. When you work in electronics with so low, uh, low voltage, you get uh, some components that are very, very, very delicate, very, very fragile. And in electronics, you get a, sur a, a source of electricity that it is positive and negative. And the, um, the tension goes from positive to negative, okay? So, sometimes you get a circuit that needs to have the current going no, like this one in simple circle but you can get circuits that are very complicated with some more derammation, with some 
microchip there with some other things and so it is not simple as going in circle you can get the current uh, getting here but then getting also here there uh, and getting everywhere a diode prevent the current the, the, the tension to go from one side to the other the symbol of a diode It is this one. This is positive and this is negative. That means that look at the triangle, look at the arrow. Here, no problem at all with the current, with the intensity, with the electrons going through. And so the flow works that way. But if by chance, in some circuit like those ones, the current gets the wrong way, this diode here prevent the current to get in this direction. Imagine to have a microchip, very delicate, very fragile, that needs to get the current only from this one to this one. It may happen that the positive gets inside here from these, okay, instead of going there, you can get the, an inversion of a flow. So if I place a diode there, the flow continues to get there, but if by chance, with by some chance, the, you have an inversion of flows, it can get through there. It will not damage the microchip nor the diode, and you preserve the functionality of all your circuit. That's the diode originally it prevents the current that's why a led that is a light emitting diode has two legs as one longer leg and one shorter leg the longer is positive the the shorter is negative and you can also replace a standard diode that it is a simple cylinder by this one and if the current, the flow gets opposite, the LED won't get lit. You don't see the bulb getting illuminated and you don't damage the microchip there. But this is a simple functional of a diode. But those are nowadays not used as preventing the flow to get into the wrong way but as a source of light, as a, as a bulb light, or to indicate the on-off or something like, in this case, you have an LED inside, and you get here. Here too, you get an LED. It is not uh, functional to get the flow in some side, but to indicate to you that it is switched on. And you, I will use those uh, diodes, those light emitting diodes as a pure a bulb, okay? So guys, this ends part one of do-it-yourself street lamps for your Christmas villages using LEDs. Obviously, this technique will not be exclusive for making street lamps. You can use the same technique to integrate LEDs inside everything for your Christmas villages. For example, a building, if you have a faulty lighting system in your buildings, or if you need to add a new source of light, hiding it behind a rock or inside a tree, very discreetly. And also, I really didn't get into action making a street lamp, starting from this part one, because an intro and a minimum, a little, of very easy, simple theory was mandatory. Otherwise, it was just a matter of you watching me doing something and you trying to replicate the same actions over and over again without really understanding the real process. But if you can acquire all the knowledge involved in the process from the basics from the 101 theory to the final product then 
you will hit the jackpot. You will be able to do the same thing over and over again without problems for the next 10,000 years. And maybe you will also be able to pass the same knowledge to someone else. That is the real objective of the videos I'm doing, of this kind of videos. I'm limiting this uh, series to 30 minutes long video, if I can, because I don't want to bore you more than what is necessary. Obviously, I surely forgot to tell you something, or maybe you want to know something more about the theory. You have the comment to do that, to ask me anything related to what you have just seen or not understood. If you get the basis, you will be doing everything correctly in no time at all. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you for part two of this mini-series very soon, next week I hope. But only if you really want. Bye, guys.